Imagine me just minding my own business in Assassin's Creed Valhalla when I stumbled across this thing. Okay, maybe I didn't actually stumble across it. I had to buy it for 5 euros and it's pretty bad to be honest. But just have a look at this. As you can see I was left with no other choice than to make it myself. Now sadly they didn't write the knife's dimensions so I had to figure those out myself. For that I wrote down the inscription on a piece of paper and then drew the blade's shape somewhat proportional to that. To get the handle proportional to the blade as well I adjusted the picture to be 100mm long then measured the handle's length which came out at 35mm and that meant that the handle has to be 35% of my blade length. I like to draw my knives onto a piece of cardboard so that I can cut it out and hold it in my hand to get a better feel for the shape. Now that I had a reference for the design it was finally time to get to forging. I'm using an old lawnmower blade so this should be some kind of tool steel similar to 1075. With the first few heats I'm just flattening out the steel. Once it's flat I can draw out my desired length. I want the cheek to look very rough, so here I'm just leaving some big hammer marks to give it the forged look. Next I could forge the tank. And the last step were three normalizing cycles to get rid of any tension from forging. Next up was profiling the blade. While everything was still nice and flat, I scraped the lines for the blood groove. If I was to do this again, I would file the groove with a guide block like I did the Puko, because as you can see the grooves are far from straight because of the rough forged surface. After that I scraped the guidelines for the bevels and then went back to the belt grinder. Okay, that's 80 grit done. Next I had to engrave the inscription. This was the only grave I had on hand so I made a new one from 1095 which definitely isn't the best steel for the job but I recently ordered some silver steel for a more permanent solution. Now some of you are probably wondering what the inscription says and I did a little research which led me to the translation Helpeth thy brother, hit like and subscribe. Man, that's convenient. I actually did translate it. I pulled up a runic alphabet chart from Google which translated it to... Now bear with me because I have no idea how to probably pronounce this. Far abetri vi stenda etha vega. Great, right? With no hope at all, I just put it into Google again and it actually led me to this Pinterest post with the exact same runes. Now according to this it translates to It's better to stand and fight, run and you'll only die tired. Now the funny part about this is that whoever designed the knife in-game probably didn't think that some guy somewhere would actually take the time to translate the inscription, so he just designed one side and then mirrored it. So now both sides say the same thing, which is half the proverb. Twice. It is better to stand and fight. It is better to stand and fight. <laughs> okay, back to the project. My last step for hardening was squaring up the shoulders. Because all my tongs are pretty crappy, I like to drill a hole through the tang and then secure a wire to that so that I cannot drop and crack the blade after quenching it. Not that that ever happened to me. Now while the blade is off for tempering, it's time to start working on the handle.
To make the carving pop some more, I used some rustic wood stain to darken the backdrop and then sanded the high spots to their original color again. So basically the mask is edging, but for wood. Surprisingly, so far everything worked out quite nicely. Okay, it's been a while, but judging by the last videos I took, this thing is tempered and I took a look at the pictures again and it looks like the blade doesn't have a secondary bevel. So we're doing a Scandi grind, which I'm going to do now. But first, I don't know, it looks like there's some smudge on the camera. Yeah, much better. Let's go. Since the knife is already tempered, I threw on my trusty Trizac belt to reduce the heat builder. And now for the fun part of hand sanding this huge thing. If you're interested in how to do a mirror polish, I've got a more detailed explanation in my Puko build video. So far the time lapse went on for 3 minutes and 20 seconds which means that it took me roughly 1 hour and 40 minutes to get this side done. Yeah, whole lot of fun. Alright, I cleaned the blade with some acetone and now I've got this blackening solution. Now the manufacturer says that I should leave this for three minutes and then rinse it with water. Now that the blade is done it was time to finally tackle the reason why there was such a long gap in this project. Brass. And I need lots of it. And the dimensions I needed were so ridiculously overpriced that it put the project on hold for a few months. I even went on this weird tangent where I wanted to make the fittings out of metal and then wire brush a brass finish on there, but that didn't really go well. A few months later though, my father and I used the clay baking oven he made to cast some brass muffins from faucets he had lying around. Ovens for clay making get hot enough for the job, but are usually built to heat up slowly over many hours so that the clay doesn't crack. Of course, we wanted it to heat up fast, so he tinkered around with the electronics a bit to boost the power up to 3400 watts, which is 100 watts below what the outlet supports, and let me tell you, the power cord got pretty hot. Alright, I've cut off the edges already because now I'm going to do this curve right here, as you can see. Okay, somehow I managed to not drill the hole in the middle and yeah, the problem is that I measured the thickness of my spine for the hole, but this hole is actually about here. So now this hole is way too big and I really don't want to 
do this whole piece again, so I'll just, I'll show you in a minute. All right, since this is essentially a chopping knife, I didn't want to just glue on the brass pieces and then have them flying off the first time I hit something. From the beginning I knew that I had to screw in the last fitting, but I wasn't exactly sure how I would do that. I decided to cut a thread into this brass rod and then weld a sleeve onto the end of the tang to connect the two. And the idea was that I screw in the rod by hand and then dome the end to pull everything together. But since the bolster brass piece doesn't fit over the sleeve anymore, I had to first finish that one and then glue it to the tank. Okay, I went over with three grids again up to 1000 because my filthy hands kind of messed up the whole polish now i'm putting on a few coats of hard wax oil to hide any small gaps i mixed some brown color into the epoxy to somewhat match the wood after the epoxy hardened i cleaned the edges and then tested whether it was watertight off camera because in the next step i put some slow curing epoxy into the handle to fill any gaps to make it real solid and sturdy for chopping and now that i knew exactly how the back piece sits on the handle i could finish that one as well okay let's go over the checklist one more time your sulfur blade mythical dagger okay a marvelous blade with steel as polished as glass yeah, I'm not sure about that one, but I think that mine can compete with the dirty glass look the game was going with. Sad to have been crafted in Alfheimir. Hmm. Works for me.